Hello, everybody. Welcome to hey, EFAP Super Chat Catch Up, EFAP Mini Mini Fappin Fibbly Babblin. This is the episode for Cinematic Venom's Triumphant Return to the Silver Screen of, of, of EFAP. Like the red tinted screen, maybe. Um, we're going to be answering some of the things you sent in for us. And, uh, you ask them, we answer them. Yeah, that. And so, uh, and here goes, I guess. No reason to, uh, to halt, to pause in any way, shape, or form. Let us go. This says, Crimbus, you say? Yeah, it was a Crimbus episode. Yeah. yeah. The best holiday of the year. What a gift. A wonderful gift. Uh, Coughing is an adorable Pokemon. If I had one IRL, I wouldn't evolve them. He's just so happy. Which one, sorry? Coughing. Wheezing is what he evolves into, right? Yeah, and coughing does seem happy, and wheezing is unhappy. You get mm. meaner as you evolve more. It's like the originals, the, uh, like, Squirtle, Bulbasaur, and Charmander. As they evolve, they get, they seem to be I a bit more serious. Angrier. Yeah, a bit angrier. Which, Which might just be a commercial to evolve them, essentially, instead of an actual... Like, maybe their attitudes don't really change. I would want them to be happy and large maybe enough to um, keep indoors. Maybe it's representative of how, typically speaking, when you cough and it can have, like, results where you're like, ah, there you go, clear the throat, while wheezing. It's like, oof. Wheezing. No one wheezes and feels in good. general. Oh, yeah, that's, that's gotta be it, definitely. Uh, J2.0? Anyway, I mean, we've had we've had all kinds of stories of people we cover, and even people who are very mad at us who then uh, have a little chat and it all works out. You know, that is uh, true. Old cavalcade, plenty. A wonderful experience. I have now put over three hundred hours into P O Six. It's one of my favorite Sonic games now. Such excellent work and dedication poured into a loving remake. Cool. P O Six. Is that like a fan game? Is it? Yeah, like... apparently. Okay. Um. Okay. Oh, Project 06? Is that what it stands for? Oh, right, yeah, the, I guess, like, like, like a, a remade version of, uh, of the classic Sonic 06, but apparently it's, uh, it's much better, I suppose. Oh, I see, okay. Because I was there, like, a remake of the first Sonic, it's like, why would you need to, like, the, the original was pretty good. <laughs> but a um, remake of Sonic 06. Project 06 awesome. score system's addictive for Sonic and Shadow getting higher bonuses is achieved through beating enemies without touching the ground. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, That's okay. uh, an interesting, like, modifier that I yes. can imagine being interesting, yeah. Uh, Merry Chrismo, Rebel Moon is good, but not perfect. Oh. <laughs> no, here, oh, here, oh, you, you poor thing. Oh, so, Rebel Moon is shit. I wonder what they thought of our coverage. <laughs> Rebel Moon is horrifically bad. You're right, you're half right, though. It isn't perfect. Yeah, I agree with that. In Project 06, you can extend your combos by using the Bounce Attack for Sonic and Chaos Spear with Shadow. Okay, that Chaos sounds about right. Chaos Spear. That was pretty cool. Chaos Spear. Does he Chaos shoot his guns while doing that move? Because if he doesn't, I don't know. It just seems a little bit lame. Well, Spear I mean, of Chaos. I like, I like the idea that in, you know, Mario and Sonic at the Olympics, Shadow is like javelin and he's like, Chaos Spear! And everybody's just like, oh, for fuck's sake, here we go no, again. doing it again. <laughs> Shadow oh, doing his it? fucking edgy hey, shit. Shadow. Hey, you, you make fun, yeah, but... Hey, 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 name. You see, you gotta say the name again. I think it's representative of the world of Chaos that Shadow comes from and that he, in that world, is more of an entity that can kind of control it or use it for more power. A spear is like a specific point of power while chaos is all over the place and he he is the key element to turning that chaos into into power and that's what the spear of chaos is so i i, I just had a, just... A, a chain of thoughts that's kind of funny the thought was all initially right. you know how they'd all probably you know i guess ride the bus to go to the olympics i guess like all the mario <laughs> and sonic characters yeah. i guess so and yeah all the sure sonic characters are in the bus and nobody wants to sit next to shadow because he's kind of like weird and because <laughs> he's literally on like a school bus with a gun like it's like uh... and then I, I just imagined how funny would it be to pair Shadow the Hedgehog with Butters you know yeah, that doesn't that just seem like it'd be a really yeah, entertaining maybe you should pairing? put that uh, submachine gun down 
Butters is it hurts he's, somebody. He just put a really relentlessly optimistic character next to such a lame, brooding loser like Shadow. Are you okay, Shadow? <laughs> Are people getting you down. You're okay. You're, <laughs> I think you're. I think you're a wonderful little guy. <laughs> you, you just need. You just need to find something that you're really excited about. You know. Yeah, <laughs> Sadik well, isn't better than you. <laughs> You're just you're fine the way hedgehog? you are. In theory. <laughs> Hedgehogs don't look like that, oh, right? Um, Mario and South Park at the Olympic Games. <laughs> Make it, cowards. Like, Cartman trying to do all of the things at the Special Olympics. What a great joke that was, where he's like, I'm going to get in the Special Olympics and win, and then forgets, oh wait, I'm incredibly unathletic. <laughs> <laughs> so he still loses. <laughs> Mauler! You called Gimli the S-word with a hard T at the end. Answer for this, you monster. What did I call him? The hard T. S-word. A, a stupid T with a T. I'm sorry, Gimli. I didn't mean it. I take it back. Uh, Kotal had a good morality system. Evil uh, acts often make progression easier and quicker, while being good often adds extra steps and challenges. Ah... It's an interesting question for games as to whether or not morality, like in order to have a truly meaningfully deep like morality system, should a game just objectively give you less bonuses and rewards for doing the moral thing? And is that, uh, you know, balanced? And I think there's something to the idea that if you get the equal rewards both ways, then is that a really good morality system if there's no incentive to do a thing that is bad or immoral or well, easy? You know, here's a question. Here's a question when it comes to morality systems. Was it the renegade choice to not send in human ships to save the uh, the council in Mass Effect 1? Is that a renegade mean. choice? It is. Yeah, it's... I think Mass Effect was in a way sort of a pioneer for this stuff, but in a way, I also think that it was some of the things, yeah, didn't quite. Well, it just, is it a bad choice to say, I don't want to send human ships in to save one ship? Is that a bad choice? Because um, the game has an opinion on it, which is that the good choice is to save the council. And you see it in the cutscene, fucking blows up a bunch of human ships with people on it to do it. A lot of it's people like, die, well, yeah. I think, I I think mean, he's criticized for it in the second game, uh, yeah. uh, in which the interview is segment, it's, it's which so is, that, yeah. Uh, with a morality choice, when the game is essentially making a declaration of this is a good choice and this is a bad choice, a lot of the time what you do see is that the evil choice is, like, really evil. It's, um, it's almost like you're going out of your way to be bad because it needs to be presented as a, a binary that everybody understands very clearly. Um... And I mean, you mentioned it before, but the whole question of, well, should the should the good way be the hard way? I'm inclined to say that that really probably should be yes. That generally, if you're going to have a morality system, you should make it so that it's harder to be good. That there will be times because when it is you're harder like, to be good. If I make the bad choice here, that puts me in a much better position. If I make the good choice, everything's going to be really hard for me going forward. Um, and you see that, like, Infamous had a lot of instances where the good choice was the difficult one that would make the game harder. Um, that just makes sense to me as a way to do it, whereas... But then there's a question of, well, a morality system, especially, if, like, in Mass Effect, where you are massively uh, rewarded if you go just one way or just the other, that... Yeah, you're, you're really, you, very you much encouraged in game. terms of rewards and mechanics to go entirely renegade or entirely par paragon yeah. you're punished for doing a mix of them which exactly. people are a mix of those things so, yeah, so when you have a game like the witcher 3 where there's no like morality system or karma points it's just what do you what what are you gonna have Geralt do in this situation which is what i generally what prefer i love yeah infamous. i do as well yeah. i love that game uh, but I mean, but but the thing with Infamous is that there's a huge amount of gameplay difference on your two runs that would make you want to do it anyway. But like, they're not really choices. You make a choice at the beginning of your playthrough. Are you going to go for Hero or are you going to go for Infamous? And then that colors every choice that you make afterward. Um, I generally prefer the, here's a bunch of choices, whether or not they're good or bad, or, you know, whether they, it's up to you, you know, pick the choices that align with how you feel about the situation. Especially because a really important and powerful part of decisions in games is that even if the choice is inconsequential in terms of its impact on the story, 
it can make you think. Um, it can make you think a lot about why you would make that choice. And as I, uh, I know, that, I think we've had a conversation on this before. How do we feel about a timer or no timer for a choice? Um, um, it's going to be context for me. I, I think that yeah, can work and not work. I think some decisions will need to be made quick. Would need to be made quickly. In some decisions, you'd have plenty of time to make to where there's essentially not a timer. But, I mean, a game where you have a mix, I mean, that could certainly be interesting. I wouldn't be against it in a game. There's also something neat about having a game where there is no timer for any choice. Like, dialogue sort of happens in segments and time kind of pauses between them. Where you can think about it, talk about it, really give it a bunch of thought as part of a more gameplay element. Um, yeah, it, uh, I, think I think it makes it be neat. Because Soma doesn't give you a timer. Uh, you can spend as long or as little amount of time as you want thinking about those choices. Uh, meanwhile, if you're playing a Telltale game, there's a timer every time. Like sometimes because sometimes you don't want to you don't want to hurry people out of thinking about it. It's uh, it's complicated. On the one hand, there's a lot of benefit from introspecting on it afterward if you've given a lot of thought. But there's something to be thought of as well of when when I had when, what was the thing that I went to first when I didn't have enough time to think through absolutely everything about it. What, because, you know, I mean, it's in real life, there are times when you have a long time to think about a choice, and then there are other times where you have, you know, only X amount of time to think about it, and it can be really short. So, yeah. Choice in video games, it's a, it's a big old interesting topic. It's a whole topic. thing. Uh, the concept art for the planned Battlefront 4 is crazy. Flipped allegiances of every character. Was there a concept art for Battlefield 4? Uh, Battlefield, Battlefront 4. I don't know. I'm out of the, out of the loop on that. I, I thought it was 3 was the, three. the big three. meme about yeah. one. Yeah. It didn't even get to 3. Well, because I was working on 3, and then, uh, and then Disney came along and decided it would be a really good idea mm. to gut LucasArts, and now they've remade it as Lucasfilm Games, which isn't clunky at all. Lucasfilm Games. <laughs> Disney really has not taken it at you know, any advantage of video game izing their stuff to the point where it's kind of strange that they... Dude, imagine how huge they could have been if they hadn't made a thousand bad decisions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like, at the peak of the MCU and, like, the Star Wars resurgence, quote-unquote, and everything, like, why weren't y'all making games? Like, what's wrong with you? I think what's um, really lame about the gutting of LucasArts is that in, in remaking it as Lucasfilm Games, they've turned it into something that it wasn't, which is LucasArts made Star Wars games, sure, but they also made original games. Um, now, they're probably condemned yeah, to forever did the just be... Indiana Jones games and yeah. Well, I, I'm talking like Grim Fandango, stuff, yeah. Monkey Island, and, and all of those adventure games. Now, of course, some of these are adaptations like Sam and Max, but... Point being, they made other things other than Star Wars games, but now I imagine it's just going to be licensed games now forever. Um, then they're not even developing because they don't. They're like they're like a publisher intermediary in between. They're not a developer. The developers are like an EA or Bethesda or Ubisoft. That team's gone. You know, like I don't get it. I don't get it. I don't understand yeah, why they would do understand. that. But you think they'd lean mm. super heavy into video games because you know, like obviously you would. Mm -hmm. But I guess not. I mean, think of the Mandalorian game they could have been making. Well, I mean, it was Star Wars thirteen thirteen. That was the Mandalorian game that they cancelled when it was well in development. They just ate that up, and I don't know. I just don't understand why you don't say, "Hey, you're almost done with this game. Uh, yeah, finish it, make it." Star Wars is great. Yes, I like because nobody would be interested in a game where you play as Boba Fett in the lower levels of Coruscant. In like an open world, hub world area where you get to be a bounty hunter. That's a very unappealing idea for a video game. Have you guys seen the Godzilla robot someone created in Tears of the Kingdom? Crazy stuff, game of the year indeed. I, I haven't seen that, but I can believe it. Because uh, yeah. you can build... I, I say you can, I can't build these sorts of things, but people can build some crazy shit in that game. Uh, it is one of the best games of 2023, yeah. Uh, did you, did you a recording of Suffering Through Army of the Dead? Uh, well, well, the state of, like, a lot of the Snyder stuff is in a weird flux of, like, corruption. It's something that me and 
uh, meme repository we've been trying to fix or go through. That's why there's like lots of delays on a couple of different plans we had. It's um, we've had to like move arcs around. This again, why the war arc is in. <laughs> I was about to say shambles. Don't worry, guys, it's coming out on time. <laughs> like it's gonna come out on time, and it's gonna be great. Damn it. Uh, this is yeah. There's it's hard to explain sometimes because a lot of the problems get solved. And then we forget that those problems happened, and so in retrospect, we almost have like a gap of, oh yeah, I, I think, yeah, fuck, the, there was a, a whole thing of like, moving this there, or copyright there, or moving this into this, or changing the editor, or, you know, there's, there's all kinds of things that happen, but, um, as for like, coverage of Army of the Dead, I don't know what happened, nobody on the fucking internet cared about that movie. No, it just, it went away, and it was not considered to be in any way, shape, or form reflective of Snyder's capacity as a filmmaker. It was bad, though. <laughs> it was absolutely It was awful. very bad. Um, it was a miserable one. It would, uh, life. it would absolutely enter into a top five worst movies of all time, and I would probably want to make them anti-movies, all five. Like, And I think that one is one where it feels like you've you've taken the concept of a movie and you've shat all over it for some reason. Yeah. It was uncomfortable to watch physically, and there was nothing of value about it. It was, it was terrible. And I guess all of those Snyder fans just didn't come out and support their boy for whatever reason. I don't know. I just platinumed God of War 2018. I wasn't even trying to. Oh, well, good for you. That means okay. uh, you would have beaten uh, Sigrun on... I don't know if they have a trophy for beating her on the hardest difficulty, but they would have had one for beating her in general. Which can be tough. Yeah. Hosts of Long. Whenever will you watch Godzilla Minus One? Oh, yeah. you know, <laughs> we, we got to it eventually. Any time now. Hashtag, I survived EFAP93 for no reason. Hello there, Cinematic Venom. Merry Christmas all. Hooray. Merry Christmas. Mola, you silly massive. How dare you have Kingdom Come Deliverance music in your EFAP movies trailer video without playing Kingdom Come Yum itself? Kingdom Come Yum? Well, Goger edited that video, so he may be a very big fan of uh, Kingdom Come Deliverance. That could make sense. God, I remember there was, like, controversy surrounding that game because of its being, like, historical accuracy as, like, a big <laughs> yeah. thing that they were going for. Where are all the diverse characters in this well, I remember, the, the I can't 14th remember was, century Bohemia game? Something along the lines of, you're going for historic... I can't remember who said it, but it was... It was, a, it was a inside along. gaming people. It was the inside gaming Oh, yeah, people. Funhouse. Yeah, yeah. Funhouse, which, um, yeah. I do, I do generally... Well, I haven't watched them in years, actually, Um, but... It was something along the lines of saying that you were going for historical accuracy while having to press the A button to jump like fuck off or something. It was like, oh yeah, that's a that's a really good point. That's a that's a really good point. What a, you made what a there. brilliant guy. You How can so you go for historical and and accuracy when it's a video game with mechanics? <laughs> that's that's crazy. Don't you know that the real life isn't the video game? Hmm. Hmm. I never played the game though, but I heard it was good. Yeah, I've heard good things about it. Merry Crimbo! I'll take this chance to recommend Tokyo Godfathers. It's my new favorite Christmas movie, and it's very heartwarming. Also, high rags. Hello. Very well. Uh, is this the biggest redemption arc since Tonald? I suppose that's for the fans to say. You know, it's hard to hard to categorize, but it was really neat having a chat with him and uh, watching his video on Lord of the Rings. Honestly, this is a great end to an arc. Perhaps it's not even the end. Who knows? Yeah, that was really fun. I like the I like the thing he did with a little time travel stuff and mm. new self, old self. I like it. He put put some work into it. Bought a shirt and everything. Big respect to Cinematic Venom for joining y'all on stream. Bigger man than most of the people y'all have covered. Absolutely. Yeah. It's uh, it's not it's not the easiest thing to do, and he uh, he did it with courage. Darth Fringy to Princess Rags. Liar. You're with him. <laughs> <laughs> you brought Baller here to critique me. And then <laughs> begins to drown rags in goo. Oh no. Oh no. Oh Jesus. That took a very scary turn. I hope he's okay. I guess we'll find out next time. <laughs> I have to drink it faster than you can pour it. Yeah. Heard Roger Scruton's critique of Harry Potter? No, I have not. No. I feel like we'll do Harry Potter someday, and we're gonna be like, oh, oh god, these, arc. yeah, the, we're gonna be like, these are I awful. I would do a Harry Potter arc, yeah. I that worry that we're gonna think they're all crap, because <laughs> of the oh, magic system, I wonder, I don't know. I don't if know. I worry, I just get the impression that that's... <laughs> I don't know much about Harry Potter, alright? 
but I, I read the books. I watched them all as they came out, and I thought all of them were fine. So I wonder if that'll uh, come crashing down. Or maybe I'll find something to appreciate in it that I hadn't before. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year, lads. Thanks for the videos and memes. No problem. Fun fact. ARTAS robot hair transplants are more expensive, not because it's more complex. Uh, ARTAS charges extremely high royalty fees per operation. I don't know what that is, royalty but alright. Royalty fees per operation? Yeah, I don't know what that, I don't know what that means. <laughs> Say the line, Venom. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> I got a it's little hot. Time. EFAP 93 was my first EFAP I ever watched in full, so seeing this is uh, so happy to revisit this with the man himself. Yeah, it's uh, it is a bit of a sunrise, sunset sort of thing, but in nothing but a positive way. Merry Christmas, EFAP crew. Happy to see you on the podcast, Venom. A special thank you to Mola for all the time you have recommended Buffy. My wife and I started watching it over the summer, and we're nearly finished with the show and love it. You better be watching Angel too. Better be doing it. Got to intertwine it, okay? It's one big show, twelve seasons. Mm-hmm. And it's wonderful. But yeah, glad to hear it. Hopefully, you enjoy. In EFAP movies for Lord of the Rings, you had a discussion about using the ring as a cock ring, and then please, oh, then please check out Jack Black and Lord of the Rings. Buffy is there to help. Re I know about that. Yeah, it's the thing that Gary brought up uh, for the other parody. That's the one I remember seeing as well. Jack Black and Sarah Michelle Gellar did a Lord of the Rings parody. He's hmm. funny. And there is cock ring jokes. Talking to your past self-made rings of power. Hmm? Hmm. What? Talking to your past self-made rings of power. Maybe. Go on time travel and that set, of course, a chain of events or something. I don't know. What's that to do with rings of power, though? I, I have I no know. idea. I'm just throwing. I'm just. I'm just as lost as you are, right? Okay. Cheers and Merry Christmas to the cast and Cinematic Venom. Merry Christmas. Hooray! Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to EFAP. Just finished watching Pluto and it's great. Got me crying for the first episode. Pluto? I have not heard of this. The TV show called Pluto? Sounds. Uh... Is, is it about Pluto the dog? Pluto. Or the planetoid or whatever it is Hold now? The dwarf planet, yeah. Pluto dwarf TV planet. miniseries from 2023. When the world's mo seven most advanced robots and the human allies are murdered one by one, Inspector Geshish, I don't know, I'm, I'm going to pronounce that wrong, soon discovers that he's also in danger. It is an animu on Netflix. Oh, okay. Oh. So it's not about Pluto, the dog. Or Pluto, the planetoid, or as the, Rex said. Or the Roman <laughs> god. Yeah, so I guess. Oh, Keith David is in it. Oh, Keith David's in it. Uh, don't recognize any of the other people. Let's see, how's it how's it ranked? It's an eight point two on Netflix. Not bad. Assuming that means anything to anybody, anyway. But you know, uh, hey, massives! I played Prey based on a recommendation rags, and I really enjoyed it. The story really got me thinking about what it means to be human, and the gameplay was quite engaging. Thanks. Oh, you bet. Uh, Prey was. I mean, it was. I really, really enjoyed Prey. It was the last of the. It's basically the last of the arcane games. They're around, of course, but the studio changed a great deal to my understanding based off of, you know, just people leaving after Prey. Then they had to make Deathloop, and then they had to make Redfall, so... And now they're making Blade. Yeah, I, I feel like those arcane games of old are just... They're no longer with us. Didn't make enough money, weren't enough successes... But, boy, glad I got to play them. And they're still around. So, yeah, I'd highly recommend Prey and Dishonored 2. Yeah, Enjoy I mean, I only ever hear good things about Prey, so I'll have to play it at some point. In this timeline, Gimli wants to save Frodo and Sam. I'm glad he traveled back in time and fixed that awful error. Also, hi, yes. Rags, Mutually and Frong. Hello. Oh, that's probably what they meant. The cinematic venom going back in time created rings of power. That's like one of those the the uh the butterfly effects. Which uh you know I'll never unfortunate, no. <laughs> Times of miracles indeed. Hey Massives, have you seen R.I.P.D.? It's a completely ridiculous and hilarious movie. It would make for great EFAP movies. Also playing Little Nightmares, also also EFAP Gaming DRG Wen, also 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 high rags. Hello. 
I've not seen RPD, but I remember seeing a bajillion fucking commercials for it, and everyone thought it was bad, so... I saw it. I remember it being goofy as fuck. Kind of, I can't remember the basic idea. It's just like undead cops that search people who are trying to get into the real living world or whatever who are dead, I think. I think so, yeah. And it's, um... Ryan Reynolds and, uh, Jeff and, Bridges. Uh, Jeff Bridges, yes. yeah. Kind of like... I think it's meant to be like, ah, uh, it's kind of like Men in Black a little bit. Vaguely, somewhat, but uh, didn't work. <laughs> Did not work. Uh, Rebel Moon is definitely a January film. A fuck you, it's January film. Yeah, it's a fuck you, you're human film. <laughs> oh. it's a terrible, terrible movie. Interesting fact a way to remember what year Tolkien died, think of the poem Three Rings for the Elves, Seven for the Dwarves, Nine for Mortal Men, One for the Dark Lord, 3791, switch over to 1973, the year Tolkien died. Interesting. He had it all planned out. Mm-hmm. I don't know about that, but... Well, it's obvious. I can't believe it, yeah. Has Cinematic Venom turned into Cinematic Anti-Venom? Or is this a Stuckman, watch it till you like it situation? Oh, we did ask him that, and um, he he felt like uh, it was a genuine sort of a, an acknowledgement of a lot of the things people were saying and rewatching, and and I think a big difference is watching the extended versions as well, um, or at least he had with Fellowship, and he was gonna do more with with them, but um, even some of the criticisms he had in his video needed to be updated because the extendeds are the better film to watch, but. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't, I didn't get the uh, Stuckman vibes, especially because his review of Lord of the Rings wasn't one minute long. So, yeah, that helps. Wow, really went all out. Yeah, he <laughs> really pulled out all the stops. Luckily, you Dumbos only need to play DDLC once. Is that so? I lived in extreme poverty as a child. One Christmas, my mum got us tickets to 10 a.m. showing of Return of the King. I felt like the richest kid on earth. Aww. That's a that's a really good Christmas present going to see that. That's uh, pure escapism, real real great. I'm so glad to have cinematic Venom back. What am I gay? Maybe, maybe. What would you say to the criticism of the Witch King leaving Merry and Gandalf to fight Rohan when the enemy thinks he has the ring? It's an odd one, but I never heard a rebuke to it. Um, well, I assume at that point it's just a matter of the Witch King doesn't know what the fuck's going on on, on Pelennor Fields and wants to go and sort it out. I remember the the developed criticism is more so, where do the Nazgul go when Rohan arrives? They sort of disappear. Um, you would have to assume that they're doing other things, which is not an impossibility. But uh, you could imagine the Nazgul could fuck with the uh, the Rohan charge. Um, oh yeah, Possibly. but of course they don't even come in until after the uh, the Harad dream have arrived as well. Like you know, Witch King comes in on on uh, Theoden, so it's like, so where was he during all of that? And it's like we just have to. I mean, like I said, it is a little bit of a he's not been accounted for, and so with good faith, you just have to assume he you saw what was happening and then was doing something that was involving attacking people, obviously. Um, but I, it's funny enough, I've seen a lot of criticism of the, uh, the, the when we whether at that point in the movies, a couple people in chat was saying worst part of the film when Gandalf gets his staff broken by the Witch King. And um, it is just a, an arguably weak part because there's just not much to work with for mechanics. It's like, what is going on there? Yeah, you don't really know what's happening or what the rules really are. And, you know, according to the, the people who, are, like even Gary says when we're talking about it, he says, like, Gandalf out, out power levels the Witch King. So it's uh, it's a weird thing that happens there, and the crazy part is, I was I was uh, talking to Drinker about this, but I was told that he and Gandalf have that sort of confrontation, and that um, Theoden arrives, and so the Witch King heads toward Theoden, and Gandalf could follow to stop him, but that Pippin tells him about Faramir, and then Gandalf acknowledges in the book that by choosing to save Faramir, it's going to cost Theoden his life more than likely, and that that element I feel like would have been really great in the film to have Gandalf choose to save Faramir and choose not to save Theoden, you know, have a choice between them, I guess. Um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, you know, I, there's more to, to talk about from other sources, but the as the film stands, 
you have room to assume that, uh, in, like I said, in good faith, that the Witch King was unable to go directly to Rohan and that uh, he was able to defeat Gandalf with his power because that's... It's like a soft magic system, so well, you have the, to... In the movie, I guess the reason he couldn't get down there was because he was probably pretty high up in Minas Tirith. For that long? I don't think so. Um, he would have... Would it, would he have had to fight his way through orcs in order to do that? Or oh no no this... sorry you're talking about Gandalf. I'm uh it, 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 the the book vision I'm talking about places Gandalf way lower in Minas okay. Tirith. Obviously in the film, if you wanted to do that payoff, you have to move everything around. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah yeah I've I've uh, th there's a couple of moments throughout the Lord of the Rings trilogy that you know there's scrutiny to be given about exactly how well they did it and. It's incredible that they managed to make it as airtight as they have for as long as they did, considering it's one of the highest variable stories you can tell. Yeah, so yep. many characters and places and things going on, and so much of it works really well. It's incredibly impressive. Mm -hmm. A small YouTuber I think would be a good guest is Siege Maximo. Talks a lot about superhero movies. Hi, Rags. Hello. Fair enough. Um, greetings, OYZ Fat Panel. Love your show. I have 50 US dollars for the man that reviews the YouTuber Pendulum. And another 50 for the man to bring him on for an episode of EFAP. I make this offer. Sorry, hiccup. <laughs> I make this no, offer really. as I believe he is underrated. You never know what may happen in the future. Who may end up I where? know who you're talking about, yeah. So, uh, you put your hands together and pray to the almighty elders of EFAP Alon, uh, who provide. Everything. We, we don't even do it. You go, it's the Elders. So we, we haven't told you guys about the Elders, but they, 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 they sort everything out for us. Venom, I have a tremendous respect for the fact that you're willing to admit the fact that you were wrong originally. It takes a great deal of courage. Good for you, sir. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's a bit of a fundamental human thing of being like, I ain't wrong, but sometimes we are wrong. And, uh, I mean, he talked about how at first he felt pretty, uh, annoyed at the fact that we'd covered him at all and it's uh it's a, i told him at the time it's a normal reaction a lot of people don't like hearing that no matter what the coverage is like, what did they do what did they say how have they attacked my soul but you know it can be chill are there any character designs you like but don't think fit the character they're for hmm. well, damn, um, not gonna come to mind on this one uh, I, imagine. I mean what do you feel about phasma Huh. Oh, yeah. Okay, I'll take that. I mean, yeah, the, that's not a. Um, if the, that was if if she was a bit more of like a like a right hand of Snoke or something like a like if she was actually portrayed as being super competent, super special, um, like in charge of more things, or was in a more like bodyguard position to the you know, to Snoke or whoever, then maybe that would be more. I fitting think instead of I'm inclined to agree around. Um, one way they could write that character is to be hyper competent and threatening. Another way you could write them is that they are actually kind of a coward and that they wear hyper armor and that they always get themselves out of any dangerous situations ahead of time because that's how they go on to survive. And that, you know, you, there's those deleted scenes in TLJ that imply that she is kind of like crap and worthless and that Finn points it out and then she kills all of her own men because she didn't want them to hear about how Finn reckons she's silly, which is really bad, but... Point being, if you wrote it from the ground up as someone who comes across as very threatening and she's very shiny and, you know, the whole, um, I think it's Ned Stark and Jamie Lannister where he says, like, there's not a scratch on your armor, implying that he never had to really do any kind of actual fighting. And then Jamie says, yeah, I, I, you know, pick your battles slash uh, I am that good, which he is that good. But, you know, Phasma could be in the situation of her arm is so perfect, shiny, and wonderful and everything because she's never put herself in a position where she could ever be in danger. But you could run a couple of different ways with it. So, yes, uh, I think the design could be awesome in the right place, but not what, we, what they did with it. Just show Hell's Kitchen and leave the room. Yeah, we could do that. Uh -huh. If we were on Twitch, of course. Yeah. Watching Lord of the Rings on cable with my folks, and they legit put a motherfucking ad break in the middle of Boromir's death scene. Like, what the fuck? What the fuck? Oof. <laughs> I don't know why you're God. watching stuff on cable these days. I mean, fuck that. My parents have often, I say often, they don't, they don't anymore because they just don't really watch stuff like that anymore. But, you know, the, this, they said the amount of commercials was just unbearable. It took way too long to see anything 
because of how many commercial breaks there were, how often they were and how long they were. You'd get like 60% movie, 40% commercials. It'd take you all afternoon to watch a movie. So many breaks. I, I just, I can't do that mm -hmm. anymore. There's no way. There's just no way. If the MCU made Lord of the Rings, all the different characters and races would have been shown up through portals at the Battle of the Black Gate. Galadriel, Arwen, Eowyn, and Rosie Cotton get the Gil Boss scene. Um, why would you even put that image in my head of the MCU making Lord of the Rings? Like, the MCU's like a person. And they're like, let me make it. Well, you don't know. Glad to see you have your cinematic Venom on for no reason. For no reason. Merry Fleems and a happy Tisms also rags. Oh, thank you very much. If only Peter Jackson put Subway Surfers at the end. I, th I, th I think there's a cut where you can get that done, yeah. And, uh, you know, ima imagine he just, it was that blatant, so Subway Surfers just shows up and the overall rating of the end of Lord of the Rings actually goes up. And people are like, eh, I found it a bit more engaging, yeah, because the little guy collecting the potions and stuff. It was interesting. Dear Mauler, Rags, and especially Fringy, if you enjoyed Soma, you should check out a game called Bone Totem. Also, please do a breakdown of Minus One. Ah. Well. Oh, well. You I'll got that. <laughs> As for Bone Totem, have I heard of this before? Bone Stasis Bone Totem? I assume it's... They mean Stasis Bone Totem. What's this? Hmm. Very positive, overwhelmingly positive. Came out May 31st of last year. Interesting. Uh, get ready totem. for a thrilling Most underwater yeah. adventure with classic point-and-click gameplay. Explore with three characters simultaneously. Featuring atmospheric, isometric graphics, rendered video, and a soundtrack by Mark Morgan, Bone Totem takes you on a journey to hidden places deep below the waves. Mm. All right, let me add that to my wish list. I ain't never heard of it. What's its, uh, do you say, like, uh, what's the Steam's overall rating from people? Uh, all reviews are 95%, recent reviews are 92%, so it's very highly rated. Yeah, all is overwhelmingly positive, that's always a good sign. Um, is it new? May 31st of last year, so yeah, pretty new. Hmm. Alright, fair enough. Interesting, yeah. Um... Okie dokie. Stupid fat hobbit having a stupid f wife hobbit. Shake my head. <laughs> what? Dang. Gollum jealous. Uh, the cinematic venom arc. You either die a lol cow or live long enough to become a massive. Glad to see the development. Merry Christmas, toxic brood. Merry Christmas. Yeah, that was quite a Christmas miracle. Yeah, you need to... Harvey Dent's gonna need to update that. I'm gonna be like, live long enough to become the villain or live really long enough to become the hero again. Or really <laughs> long enough. Venom, do some research on what the Mongol Horde did. For example, their annihilation, not even sack, of Baghdad. Tolkien comparing orcs to Mongols makes sense and has nothing to do with race, just human barbarism. They were a fearsome people. Yeah, I wasn't sure, because I'd need to see the quote and uh, more context, because I, I think that was like a small part of the video. I was just like, what? What was that about? Um, gotta love how Sean Bean really hiked up those mountains in full makeup and costume because he was scared of helicopters. Yep. That was, uh, Kahadras. He didn't want to... He didn't want to be in a helicopter. I, wonder, I would have thought Viggo Mortensen might have been like, I'll hike it too, because it'll be more real. Favorite horn in Lord of the Rings? Mine is the Haradrim one. It is a good hmm. one. Because we have Boromir, the horn of Helm Hammerhand that Gimli blows. We got the Haradrim horn. Um, I do really like the horn of Gondor. Do we have any more horns? That's three. Any more horns? Got to be some some orc horns, horns happening at some yeah, point. Yeah, probably right? there might be some. I don't know. I think I like. Um... Oh. Hmm. There's a certain simple but nice aesthetic to the Horn of Gondor. I think sound-wise, I gotta go with Hammerhand's horn that Gimli blows. Because I think that when that gets blown, it's at a very 
you know, epic kind of moment mm -hmm. when, you know, Thaden's talking and they're charging out the doors and kicking butt. So uh, I think it's a great lead in to the Rohirrim arriving. I'm inclined to agree. Well, no critters have been crisp today. I tip my hat to you, Venom. A lot of respect for a guy who can go back and do this with the feedback you received. Earl Urals. Check out A24's Civil War trailer. Looks cringe. It does look cringe. We'll have to see what, uh, what goes on there. Um, I've seen the fighting back and forth. Obviously, the, the basic take of Texas and California, question mark? And then someone else, I don't know if you guys saw it, it was like a viral tweet of like, oh no, fiction isn't reality. Oh, the, that's yeah, they're enga thank yeah, yeah, thanks for like engaging. On and then when you tell someone that, they'll be like, oh, well, that's that's the end of the conversation then. You've you've convinced me. It's amazing because it's, it's only done to just fight. It's like you know exactly what the person's saying. That that sounds... Yeah, you know it's obviously... Mean. The fact that they have America means they've based it at least somewhat on reality. And it's just that it's a wild thing to see that there would be a civil war of civil... <laughs> of California... Texas versus the rest of America? He like what 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 happened? Yeah, what could possibly happen to make those two very politically different areas? And then being like, online. oh shut up. And it doesn't matter. It's fiction. Like, oh, okay. That was fun. I'm sure it'll be great. Everyone's looking forward to it. What do you think of them cutting up all the footage they have and releasing 20 to 45 minute episodes weekly with a long form podcast show bringing on cast and crew to speak before we lose any more people? For Lord of the Rings? I mean, it'd be cool. Any, any more, you know, sort of a commentary on them from original cast members and crew members and stuff? It'd be, yeah, it'd be cool. An EFAP episode with Cinematic Venom, jam a man of fortune to receive this unbolding gift. <laughs> so that'll never not be funny. Truly the unbolding. <laughs> jam a man of fortune. <laughs> Sam and Frodo were gay. I would know. I'm Gay Pinto Walsh. Ooh. Gay Pinto Walsh is still around. I think he was that art critic we, uh, we discovered soon after the anniversary. I believe so, yeah. Yeah. Le Fap, literal years of entertainment and changing how I view media. Thank you all so much for your hard work. I hope you never stop. Also, what is your favorite bird and why? Oh, damn. I think we've been asked this before, mm. but I think my answer is where I really like ravens and crows. I really like the secretary bird. And I, I really like... Hmm. I don't know, just all the little birds that hang around in the neighborhood, you know, build nests everywhere. You know, the little guys. Those are really mm. neat. I really like I like them. magpies. They're kind of cool looking. Yeah, yeah, those are neat. There's a, I like a lot of birds. A lot of birds are very likable. That's the thing, when you ask me, there's so many birds that I like, so it's hard to pick. But I do, I'm pretty partial to crows. Uh, I like kookaburras a lot. I really like eagles and hawks and falcons as well. They're super cool. I like seagulls, you know? I think I think that's seagulls are neat. Yeah. Um I like penguins, they're super cool. You gotta admit uh, owls I, have a pretty iconic look. Owls are awesome. Yeah, owls are like the great horned owl. Man, that's an awesome looking bird right there. Uh I do like hummingbirds as well. I like sparrows. I I basically I like toucans and I'm I and I'm a big fan of parrots. Parrots are really cool. Like parrots and all of their associated Sort of things yeah, like uh, smudgies and cockatiels yeah. and cockatoos. Yeah, I, those are really I'm neat. I'm a big fan of birds. I, they uh, look I cool really and like they're birds. really neat, you know, when they bounce around and pick up stuff and interact with things. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Cinema Sin slash Wins Puss in Boots 2 EFAP. Oh. Could it be it's already happened by the time you're listening to this? I don't know. I don't I, I don't know either. Actually, this, nah, no memes. I don't know if that's happened yet. But it's on the way. It is on. It's cooking. The empire is never more alive than when we sleep. They've posted it again. Oh, hey, another one. Yeah, that's a good quote. Good and Andor's good shit. Short man bad. Boo throws popcorn. Boo, you say boy. that every time. How could you do this? Greetings, massive. Sorry for immediately making myself one of the EFAP's worst villains with this next line. But rules are rules. I just lost the game. Oh, I just lost the game. Oh. Very true. Very true. Well, I hope you're all right. 
Merry ah, Christmas, okay. my massive N words, Ewoks, and knee. You too. Thanks much. Mm hmm. Now that Venom is redeemed, who is the worst? Oh, is Venom redeemed? <laughs> oh, I thought you meant the character Venom. <laughs> Venom wasn't uh, even the worst before he was redeemed, uh, quote unquote. Like, you know what I mean? Like, there's, yeah. Um, who's next? Oh, who's you next know, in I terms can... of redemption? Who knows? I. It might be. Do you think it'll be somebody like Brown Table because he's really young and he feels lost, kind of? Like, he doesn't really know what he's doing. He's just drifting <laughs> listlessly. Well, why not the Stuckmanator, Rags? What if he makes a movie that we think is the greatest movie of all time? No, like, a character arc is exciting and interesting, so I don't know if that would be something he could do. But that's the whole point, is that he has an arc to become interesting enough to have an arc. <laughs> maybe, maybe. But I don't know. I'm Consider me skeptical. But maybe. But I Let's don't see. know. Well, that is the final uh, Super Chat for that night. I believe it was oh, a right. bit of a short Oosh. fat, but it was a nonetheless yeah, a very meaningful perfect. one around about Christmas times. And so, for back then, Merry Christmas. For right now, enjoy right. your day, whatever it is you're up to. Yeah, everyone, have a great day. And thanks again for the Super Chats. We really appreciate it. Absolutely. It all rolling. They grease the wheels that turn the cogs of EFAP. Yeah. Chugga, 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 chugga. Or or maybe those are just our tears at all the bad movies oh. we watch. Can't Could be. Some time. Okay, bye-bye. Goodbye, everybody. Yeah. We'll see you later.